Hi there, I'm in um, open source QGIS Pi here and um, let me just confirm the exact, that's um, Pi, yep. And um, what I wanted to show you was a very, um, a very sort of straightforward, simple video about making the labels uh, sort of more configured and just showing you uh, how to do some basic configuring, basic customization of labels, uh, just to show the information that you want to show. Um, it's it's a, a quick intro, it's just give you an overview, but from this video really, you should be able to just literally do anything you want with the labels. So it's a good starter point for anyone who um, hasn't really played around with labels in QGIS. So what, what I've actually got here is uh, this Orbis map background, um, which is the one we, 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 I always use. Uh, these red stars are actually from a Geo RSS feed, and um, which I think is VGS. And there's been a few earthquakes uh, in the UK, and not, 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 not big ones, um, but uh, noticeable nonetheless, especially if you're uh, living in the area. And when I click on info, for this one here, you, you can see some information. Let's have a look. So it's not particularly well organized, this info. Um, everything is uh, really in the title. Um, you can see the title there just contains splurged data. And there is a publication date, published date for the, for the uh, earthquake. And yeah, it's from, there it is, it's from um, BGS. Um, and um, it's an open feed that you can get to yourself uh, and, and there's there's the pub date um, date and time uh, would have been good to break this all up but um, but but that's fine I can do it in the label um, so I'm just reading the GRS RSS uh, raw here um, and I've got another video which talks about adding um, that to QGIS uh, this video is about the labels so I'd like to show the date of the late of the earthquake uh, with the the magnitude, so it's 3.5 there, which is uh, quite quite decent for UK actually. Uh, 3.5, sort of underneath on the line underneath. So how do we, how do we do that? Well, you right hand click on your layer and go to properties. And at the moment you see it's set to no labels. So it set it to single labels. There's lots of other things, and we'll cover them in other videos. But let's go to single labels, and actually it's just put there um, what I, what I did last. But um, at, if we just picked off a field like title and apply, you'll see it just goes splurge. So, which, which is fine, you may want that, but it's a bit messy in my book. Um, we can rationalize that, we can sort it out. So how do you do that? Well, you, you click on the expression button here and you go into the um, expression editor. So here, so here you can see the expression dialog it's something that crops up in all kinds of places in QGIS, extremely powerful. Um, and um, personally, I think it's quite user friendly. So how do we want to start this? Well, it's not actually the sort of full uh, title or anything. If I want to put the date um, on there first, I need to extract the date from a field. Well, we know when we click on the uh, fields and values here and we can see pub date, we can just put that sort of straight in the um, and, and, and that's the field we're getting the date from. See how down here you can so you could select a particular record if you want and it, it'll sort of preview what is what's going to what's going to happen. So the actual um, note it's got double quotes around pub date. You don't actually need them for what we're doing here. Um, but a bit more on that later, sort of quotes and uh, single quotes and stuff. But let's not worry about that for the moment. You can just put in pub date. You could type it in. If I was typing it in direct, it would and it would prompt you. There you go, auto sort of prompt, and I'll just click on it, which is great. But it's not the pub date as such. I mean, if I pressed OK and click apply, it's just going to whack the whole pub date in there, which again is still messy. So we're going to use a string function. And that string function is, if we click down here, we can see lots of string functions we can play around with. And, and actually I've already worked out that if we use the left string function, i.e. start counting from the left, 
and um, immediately for the rest and, and move along 10 characters, we will get the date. Press OK and apply. And there you go. Uh, yeah, it's in that format at the moment. It's the 8th of the 9th, 2020. But, you know, there's other things we could we could do to, to reformat that and sort it out. It's always better to um, uh, sort out in at, at source. But uh, that's not something um, that I can change. The um, So... But what I'd like is, apart from the date, I would like on the next line, the magnitude. So you can click on plus and you'll see here, you see this little um, thing here, slash N. And when I hover over it, it says new line. So I just say plus new line. And then I can say plus again. So I'm going to sort of concatenate these all together. I'm going to put them all together. It's saying there's a parser error at the moment because I've just got plus and then nothing. So I will add something. And what, what am, um, am I going to add? I, I'm going to pick off just for the sake of really demonstrating this this next um, string function for you. I'm going to pick off the, the sort of m value, um, which is another substring, um, and I'm going to pick off the m sort of colon, and that comes from the title field. So you have to know your fields. You have to know what's in them. So substring is I'm picking out a substring in the middle of a string. I'm picking out some text in the middle of a string, some some letters, and we start 22, oh, comma, 22 along. So I count 22 along from the left, uh, but I just want a couple of letters. You see how I get I get M now. So I could have I could have just written um, this like that, and plus. Um, oh, sorry. I could have just gone plus M like that, and I get the same thing. Here, I'll show you. See, I got the M. So, um, so you can just stick things together. I'm going to continue with substring because it's it's a pretty powerful thing to pick out stuff as needed as needed. And um, uh, so, we'll, and we're going to use it again. So, because we're going to go plus and stick a um, colon in there. Actually, it was single quotes. The double quotes you, typically reflects that you're, you're, you're pointed to a field. So um, single quotes are usually, usually your friend. And then plus, and it's another substring. And it's for the title again. And it's 25 characters in, so I count 25 characters from the left, and I just want four because I know that's where the um actually is it four correct yeah it is four and then press ok press apply and now you see how it says the date m for the magnitude and then the value if you look around so at the top there 3035 and there's a 2 1 down there and Actually, like I said, three five three zero is pretty substantial. So uh, uh, yes, I I perhaps went a bit substring mad there, but really it was just to demonstrate the, the, the power of that. And I can shorten all of this just by removing all of that, uh, saying plus, and putting an n in, and just writing because I because I know it's magnitude. I know I know what the sort of I know I want to write m in there. So when I press OK on that and apply. I, I get the same thing. Um, so lots of things to uh, functions, etc. To, to pick up here, uh, re reformatting of dates and numbers and stuff. I could use that actually. Uh, and um, I can uh, pad out strings, etc. I can turn numbers into strings. There's there's all sorts of things. Plus in my expression, I could use all sorts of other um, functions from here. Um, converting things to a, to a date format and, and w whatever I mean it's endless really so there's there's lots of power here uh, and don't forget it's good how it shows this preview down at the bottom here so when I select a, a record you see what I mean it says and it actually shows that new line there so a preview is really really handy don't uh, underestimate it and as I flick through so I can flick through records 
and see exactly you know how things are going to look so is my expression here actually um, uh, any good and uh, it certainly does look like it and when you're in labels of course I can on the text I can uh, choose fonts I can set to bold or whatever uh, I could change um, all sorts of things and just to end this what I'll do is just quick look at placement so um, we can force the uh, labeling to be around a point or just offset uh, I typically like to offset a bit so I could click on the right hand side of the point here and um, if there was no offset and pressed OK it would go quite sort of crushed in over the feature point over the point so I typically like to just sort of shift it out maybe a bit three maybe is it three pixels maybe yeah there you go so it's sort of tight in but doesn't really overwrite so again lots of lots of things there and we'll, we'll, we'll save that for a for a different time but anyway I hope you um, found found that useful a very very quick intro to QGIS labeling it's very simple to use and don't forget to kick it all off right hand click your layer go to properties and um, get the labels again other settings are available in the toolbar but you know just you, you can start off just going straight to labels um, and um, playing around with all these different settings uh, hope that's useful thank you